All right, example two, we're going to use example one. Oh, I should have had all these notes as just a single thing of notes because I won't be able to page back. All right. Oh, well, test your memory for the first video. So suppose that we have a very similar situation, same manager, the manager from example one, they want to establish an optimal inventory policy. Okay. And again, we talked a little bit about optimal inventory policy in the first video. The more orders, the fewer things we have to carry. The fewer things we have to carry, the lower the inventory cost. Okay. But we'll have a little something else going on here. So again, we're estimating 1,200 cases. They're still sold at a steady rate. So remember those decreasing lines that we wrote last time. Um, and the manager is placing several orders. Again, this is all very similar. So use the following data to determine the economic order quantity. So that just means the order size that minimizes the total ordering and carrying costs. So in the previous example, all we did was carrying costs, but now we're also going to include ordering costs and specifically the ordering cost for each delivery is $75. Okay. So we're going to utilize that plus what we did from example one. So our total costs, right, is going to be carrying cost plus ordering cost. And again, we're going to say if we order X times. So we already calculated the carrying cost from example one, right? Our cost function is a function of X. And in example one, we said that it's going to be 1200. Nope, nope, we didn't say that. We said it was going to be 600 divided by X. We got this from example one. Right? If we ordered once in example one, we got that the we got that the cost was oh yeah this is not this is not it this is this is times eight times eight see I have to remember uh I have to remember example one too and I just did it I just recorded it right and what what was this right this is the the cost per case per year. And remember that this was the average in inventory. We found this in example one. So that's our carrying cost. Then we have to add the ordering cost as well. If we're ordering, if we're making X orders, we're making X orders and each one is going to cost $75. Well, then the ordering cost is just $75 times X. All right. And we can clean this up a little bit. Right. This cost function. This first one is going to be 4,800 over X, just like we did in example one. And the second one is 75 X. So this is our cost function. Now, what were we asked to find? Determine the economic order quantity. We want an order size that minimizes the total ordering and carrying cost. We want to minimize a cost function. We've got an optimization problem on our hands. Woohoo! We need to minimize this. So minimize this function. Minimize this cost function. All right. And this function if you're curious, um, kind of as a diagonal asymptote right there. And it looks like this. We're looking for that minimum value. We want to minimize this cost function. So how do we minimize something? We find the, we find this local minimum right here. How do we find a local minimum? Why well, we look at critical points. When the derivative equals zero, we use the first or the second derivative test to make sure it's a minimum. Here, uh, you can also use what you know about the problem and the shape of the graph to work. But later on, we'll have to talk about checking end values. So yeah, we got to minimize this function. Let's uh, look at the derivative. I'm going to copy the function down again. Our cost function is 4,800 divided by x plus 75x. And let's get derivating. All right. So 
Critical point is when this derivative function equals zero. What is the derivative of this? Use the power rule. 4,800 over x squared plus 75. And again, right? Remember, 4,800 divided by x. That's 4,800 times x to the negative 1. So when we take the derivative, we use the power rule. The negative 1 comes down, and we subtract 1. So that's why this becomes negative. Subtract 1 from the exponent is x to the negative second, which is why there's an x squared in the denominator. All right, and we look for critical points. Critical points when the derivative equals 0 or is undefined. So oh, we'll set it equal to 0. Solve for x. Let's get going. So 0 equals that, negative 4,800 over x squared, plus 75. And this is a rational equation. If we have fractions, we want to get rid of them. So to get rid of fractions here, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by our LCD. Luckily here, there's only one denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x squared, and the denominator, the fractions, go away. Left-hand side is just 0. Right-hand side, we distribute it. On this first guy, the x squareds cancel out. Negative 4,800 is what we have. The second one, we get 75x squared. Add 4,800 to both sides. And divide both sides by 75, which I have no idea what that is. 4,800 divided by 75. 64. Oh, that's a nice number. Square root both sides, you get x is equal to plus or minus 64. Sorry, plus or minus 8. We're only going to include the plus 8 here. We're not going to order negative 8 times. So what was x? We solved for x, but what was x, right? The number of orders. All right, so we should order 8 times. Can you order 8 times? Let's write that down. How big is each order going to be? Well, we need 1,200, right? 8 times how big each one should be, you can call it whatever variable you want, has to equal 1,200, right? We, if we're ordering 8 times, these 8 orders need to give us 1,200 cases of this frozen orange juice. So we get 1,200 divided by 8, which is going to be... Uh, 150. So 8 orders... 150 cases in each order. That is how we are going to minimize our ordering, our delivery, and our carrying costs. All right? There we go. That's example two. This is the economic order quantity. Specifically, this right here is the economic order quantity. And then we could see how much it costs by plugging this into our cost function. All right? But we're saving money because we are calculus-loving managers. All right? So go ahead and you should be able to get started on a lot of these problems, this first chunk of problems. We'll do another similar one afterwards, and then uh, we'll get into the next half of the section in video four.